This week's YKWD is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And you know what, dude, listeners? Get 10% off the first month at betterhelp.com slash dude. That's betterhelp.com slash dude. Hey, what's up, everybody? Have you ever had one of those moments where you realize it's time to find a new place? At Apartments.com, they call that an out-of-apartment experience. Check it out. Being in New York City, I tell you, the one thing that I had, the one thing that gave me comfort, the one thing of spending spending time out all day hustling, all night, coming home late, is that I had a key, a place to go, an apartment. That's what really matters. Nothing scares you more than when you have to get a place. Finding the right place, you know, and apartments.com, they've helped millions of renters find their perfect place to live. And their powerful search tools, they they help you find listings that check all your boxes. So take a moment and check out apartments.com, the place to find a place. This week's YKWD is brought to you by Policy Genius. If someone relies on you financially for financial support, child, a wife, a husband, uh, aging parent, a business partner, you need life insurance. Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash YKWD and answer a few questions. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply the policy you choose. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. Okay, head to policygenius.com slash YKWD to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you could save. Yeah, baby, we're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude, live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKWD. I started the social media and podcast. <laughs> the fact. The YKWD podcast. YKWD is back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started before them all. YKWD. YKWD. This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. You're ruining this. Where's the bandana, man? Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. You know what, dude? We're back. We're back. Yeah, that's right. Should I have taken a week off? Yes, I should have. I had my, my special taping in Tampa. Big weekend. Mother's Day. Family went down. Spent it with the Caltas. All kinds of stuff. And I should have took tonight. I should have just got a guest host. No, but I don't do that. Because I'm the most consistent podcast. If, I, yeah, maybe some are bigger. Maybe some are better. Maybe they make more money. But not consistent. Not like me. Not every week. Pretty much almost. For 15, 20, 30, 14 years. I've been here for you truckers. Uh, uh, keeping you up at night. I've been here for you, chubbies. Home. Your wife. Nah, 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 nah. You're out in a shed smoking a cigar. Listening to me. Tell you the way it is. I'm speaking your voice. <laughs> All you women out there who like guys like me. I'm here for you. Belly button hernia. Dead toenail. Varicose veins. Couple skin tags. I'm here for you. Okay. Not everything's hot pickles. Not everything's smoking. Oh, awesome, gorgeous. Look how good I look. Look at my sneakers. Fuck that. I'm a man, and I'm the last one of them. I'm a right down the middle, blue collar from Medford, Massachusetts. Man, I'm right here. I'm not too smart. I'm not too dumb. 
I'm not too in shape, but I ain't too fat. And I'm here for you women, and I'm here for you men, and some of you little rascals out there that need to fucking learn a thing or two about a thing or two. We're back with, uh, you know, back again. When she told me who's on, I go, why is he on again? And she goes, you told no con. I was like, oh, I did. <laughs> no. Of course, <laughs> Comp Blanche. Comp Blanche. Com- me, oh. Casa, Su Casa, Mike Cannon. Is here today. Wow, back. You are in a good mood, man. We are back. I'm back. Listen, man, a lot of stress is off my plate. Uh, yeah, you could see. A lot. Let me look at my gut when you say that. I didn't mean to, but oh, you stop do have a with, stain on right, it. That's not a stain. That's just sweat. That's sweat. powder. All right, it's powder. It's a fuck. It's from a <laughs> it's from some type of meal. I think it's from pita bread. Which I shouldn't be having, but I had a special. Yeah. Job. What'd you have after? What was your post? I know we're skipping ahead a little we'll bit. Skip, you're, yeah. you're burying the lead. I know, but I'm so interested. You're gilding the lily. What's that that, that's, how, that's kind of how I celebrate now, too, since I don't just get blacked out and fall asleep at a bar anymore. Yeah. I uh, I just eat. You got to be careful, dude. Yeah. Because I it used to be... I still work out. It used to be pussy with me. Yeah. Can you still say that? <laughs> dude, it used to be puss. I used to tear <laughs> into some puss. You I mean, that's, that's where it starts to get problematic. Where? The puss? The tearing into... Why? I didn't the whether tear. she I didn't, wanted believe to me, or not. I've never teared into anything. <laughs> I've <laughs> eased my way in <laughs> and went, I'm here. What? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> um, Rachel's coming, but she's late. Yeah. I mean, she's always late. She won't be here until fucking 10. That's okay. I had a barbecue for her. I threw a barbecue. Threw a barbecue. For, I threw her ba- a bar- for the baby? For the baby. For her, her husband. She showed up two and a half hours late and then had to leave early. <laughs> <laughs> she was pregnant. That's who. No, the baby was there uh. in the pool. <laughs> I had a fire. I bought baby floats and everything for a little baby to be in the pool. Wow, didn't go in once, huh? She, uh, no, the baby did go in with okay. the, with Pete. He because she married a man. Yeah, yeah. She's a he's a fireman. He's a uh, chief. He's gorgeous. He's a chief. Yeah. He is. He's fucking problematic. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I don't like having him around my wife. They're good audience members. I used to. I haven't done a firehouse in a long time, but I stripping. Stripping. <laughs> yeah, I haven't uh, wagged my dick in front of a bunch of mustached alphas, but mm-hmm. in a while. But yeah, yeah, comedy wise, they're also great. <laughs> yeah, comedy wise and stripping wise, they're good. Yeah. Especially with your ass, your your clang a tang tang. I bet I could wear a wig and fool a couple. What do you mean? Like I bet if I wore a wig and yeah. did not show the front of my body, I could fool a few with your bum, with my ass. Yeah. Oh. And oh, my sleek 100%. back, because it's not just ass. The ass can distract for so long, but eventually you start seeing that Michael Phelps V down to the waist, and you're like, "Well, that's a well, that's a." It's fella. the spine. You have a a lady spine. You have a feminine spine. Yeah. No hair, no nothing. <laughs> no. It's very contoured. Yeah. 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 And sleek. Yeah. Too, if you put a little too... g-string on those hips. Oh my god. Ah, uh, you shave those I'd fucking drive you brutal nuts. legs. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, she, that that is the brutal legs though. Is I've I have like Irish milk stack. Yeah. Like yeah, it's just terrible. They yeah, should they, Yeah, they're only gonna get worse as you get older. Um, no, but so she's coming. That might be her right now. She probably come up. That's her. Yeah, she's panicking, beeping twice. <laughs> um, You're making some real deep eye contact so far, and what, it's. Troubling. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm looking at you. We're I know. I guess so much connection. I don't know what's happening right now. I'm <laughs> I don't understand that. You. What do you want me to do? What uh, you... Nothing. I don't know. But it's something about. Are you overall... high right now? Or are you so? No, no. I'm fine. But your overall that... demeanor. There's no overall. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I so positive. Like a, it's it's a, throwing me a little a bit. Big and thing, you're locked in. A big in. a big thing with me is eye contact. Yeah. Me too. I didn't look at my grandfather. I didn't know my grandfather had blue eyes until I was. I think. 19 years old, 20. In sobriety, my sponsor was like, look people in the eyes. Yeah. My and parents taught me that. That was a huge no thing one taught me about that. respect. Never. I looked at yeah. my grandfather's eyes. I go, you have blue eyes. He goes, what the hell are you talking about? I thought I was a fucking queer. I like, what are you, gay? You're what are you looking at me for? In. Go 90 uh, Um, Yeah. So I look at people's eyes. I make my son do that, too. Yeah. He does not want to look in your eyes. No, kids don't. They're like fucking dogs. They just avert your pupils. It's a good way, though, because when he lies, he can't do it. Yeah. And I know he's lying, and then he giggles. <laughs> Big thing with me is truth. You get Do whatever the fuck you want. Just yeah. tell me the truth. Yeah. Please tell me the truth. If you lie to me, we broke trust. That's right. I we can Whatever you do, we can make it through. There she is. Hi, how, how you doing? doing? How are you? Great, good. How are you? 
Look at she. Look at stop for a second. Yeah. Joe, can you do me a favor? There's a bug on Rach. No, no. Stay right. Don't stay, move. stay there. Don't move. Yeah. Joe, it's right in that. Stay. Don't move. Don't do not here. move. Stay there. It's in her armpit. Grab it. All right, take it off. Whoa, Jesus! Now I feel like that's way that's way better. Okay, listen. Ew! What is that? Oh no, it's just like a smear. It's not even a bug. Okay, it's not a bug. I just didn't want you getting a chocolate or something. What are you fucking binge eating late at night? Well, pizza at the firehouse. Be right back. I really am a pig. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, there you go. It's a little nugget. I'll put the sweater back on. You look too hot for this podcast. You look, why you always look like she's like the Jackie O of comedy. Really well dressed. The Jackie O. Time. Yeah. She's never not a fucking million. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen Amy walk through it. I'm like, uh, what, what did you just, is there a bed in the car? Did you get out of a bed? <laughs> <laughs> she's got fucking PJs on, one eye is open, the other one's shut. This one never has comes in. She, look at her. Where do you even get that? Where do you even get an outfit like that? And my husband, not a fucking compliment. Yeah, you know why, I though? Honestly, but nothing. I mean, nothing. I'll be like, do I look okay? There you go. That's what he says. There you go. <laughs> there you go. What you say when you're, like, serving meatballs to someone? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love Pete. That's the I best. love Pete so much. Man, I'm going to incorporate there you go. I'm taking there yeah. you go. Nothing. That is, that is Oh, that makes awesome. me so. I, I'm not kidding when I tell you this story. I fucking FaceTimed him <laughs> backstage from that Netflix special thing I was doing. Doesn't, I've told him many times, you send a text when someone's doing a text. Yeah. Forget flowers. Oh, no. Put your headphones on so you can hear how loud you get. Sorry. I just assume I'm an unacceptable, loud, nasally Jew, but <laughs> he's, I'm like, just a text something, you know, like flowers, mm -hmm. something like, few minutes, not, never, like, not even just, you know, nothing. I'm about to go on stage. I get a message, a text from him. I open it. I'm like, what is this? I can't open it. Gas bill. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm sorry. But you, the gas bill. I'm like, I'm about to go on for my Netflix special. Make him laugh. Go get him. There you go. I go, yeah. do you want to see my outfit? I'm going to FaceTime you. I'm on. He goes, nah, I'm on with Gabe, his high school friend. <laughs> I called Gabe. I was like, Gabe, tell this dummy. He spoke. He's like, I'll tell him. He doesn't know, you know. But then when he does, he's not like, oh, I'm so. He's like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> just dumb as a rock. Yeah. And you, you know, let me tell you something though. That's the you best. did a good job because the day he does go, babe, you look prettier than I've ever seen. You're gonna break down and <laughs> fucking lose your shit. Here's the. I, I used to say this all the time. My mom said I loved you every second I left the house. Every, I love you. I love you too. I love you. I love you too. My stepdad said I loved you once at my graduation. I was like, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. I lost it. He's never <laughs> said it. So, yeah, good for you. You're right. The answer is to have a non supportive spouse. <laughs> yeah. A non it would traumatize you if they were kind to you. <laughs> yes. That is a good I tell learning you, I'm lesson. I'll play some soft piano music under that when Bobby <laughs> breaks it all down for us. Rach, Rach. I, not I, get I cleaned the house one day when we lived in New York. Don came home and cried. Yeah, right. low expectations in that yeah. way. That's low, keep them low. Yeah, she, I cleaned the whole house, everything. She came in, she goes, "You clean the house?" Oh and I was my like, god! Yeah. And she went, "Oh my god!" Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, there you go, baby, for you." The closest I've ever come to getting my ass <laughs> eat was when I swiffered the floors. That is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. <laughs> closest I've ever come. Like, what were the other close calls? <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. didn't even happen what? either. <laughs> just almost did. She came. Uh, yeah, felt like was she was just, working uh, near that area. Yeah, yeah. I was like, God used, bless her for she that. She wished you swift your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> smelled like fucking <laughs> yeah, for some reason, pennies. Hold up. <laughs> Sm <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Um, oh, my God. Well, that's great. Now, you were in Netflix. It was like a Netflix is a joke festival. Yeah, I remember. I was actually invited to it. Mm -hmm. I was on a poster. Wow. Somebody sent me a poster, and they never sent an offer. What? You were on a poster? I swear to God, somebody poster. sent me a poster. Hey, man, I'll see you next week. You're at the thing. <laughs> and I was like, I called my agent. I go, hey, man, I remember you called me about this Netflix thing. And they and I, I said, yeah. You said, just say, yeah. I was like, all right, whatever. Oh, yeah, they never called back. No. I was like, What? <laughs> Your Whoa. face was on the actual no, poster. No, my name is on the poster. Oh my god, this business is so dumb. Yeah, Google it. That's like uh That means this is what that means. They said, "We'll just have Robert Kelly here too." And then they were like, "Hey, um blah blah blah, you want to put Bobby?" No. "Hey Bill, you want Bobby?" No. 
<laughs> hey, fucking Amy, no. Because it was all shows and friends. That means every single person that had a show, no, nah, we're good. Yeah, that's the only reason I did it, because I was on Amy's show. Yeah. You were on Amy's show. Yeah, friends. everybody yeah. just thinks I'm her assistant. They just yeah. pile up, like pile coats on top of my head. They're like, how's her Thursday? <laughs> 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 or that just means that they're wildly disorganized and they just forgot yeah, that could, they didn't it, send it you the probably offer. What it actually means? No, that was happening. One of the biggest companies in the world that. Well, they are dropping. No. Whoa! They're plummeting. Last week with the fucking. Now this week. I would That's love to be on them. I'd love to help <laughs> rise the ship, but unfortunately, <laughs> there it is, right there. Where's my name? Where's my name? Hold on. Is my name there? It's it's in fucking five <laughs> Yeah, oh, oh, you're all the way. There, right, right there. God, this is so. Fast. Look at that. My I am God. down. Robert. Wow. <laughs> so I was definitely somebody else canceled. And then because I don't see myself. I mean, somebody was uh, like some. They had another fun loving girl that did characters had a heart attack. Oh, degenerates <laughs> live or broke a leg. I'm uh, up there. Yeah. Line up. Subject yeah, I'm to change. not there. You're there too. No oh. line up. Subject. To oh. change. Uh, line up. Subject. Yeah, that's where I am. I'm always I'm, right, I'm under that umbrella. Too. I'm always eight point Helvetica on a poster. too. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Surgeon General warning. Yeah. The only the only festival that treats me right is just for laughs. Yeah. They're the only one that's ever treated me correctly. Well, they also don't like me. Well, maybe they will. They'll change. One day. I talk to yeah, them. I've never like won things. If people win contests and award. Ever since fucking kickball, when I was the very last person to ever be chosen for kick, people would fight. One guy pushed another guy because he was left with me. It's like, oh, fuck, <laughs> take it, her. <laughs> 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 I, I never won anything either. I never won any. Never. I That's Chris, so sad to me. I was always captain. the list of the best. Oh, it's the worst. Chris uh, Bracha, my yeah, best friend. Always captain. My, my best friend in West Memphis, he lived across the street. <laughs> he he uh, was in the, the Wee Blows, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is before the Boy Scouts. Okay. And he, he used to take me, but I couldn't afford to go and be a member. My mother couldn't afford. So I would just go and sit in the Wee Blow meetings. And he had the, <laughs> the Wee Blow, the little scarf. With the Weeblo medal and the sash, oh. and they had a um, they had a raffle for a Christmas tree one year, and I had a ticket. They got me a ticket, <laughs> and he won, and I was like, he wins everything. <laughs> and I remember just crying because I didn't I didn't get the Christmas tree. It was so sad. I know won. those moments like they stay with us. That's why we're like yeah. the opposite yeah. of Tiny Tim. Who you're like Big Bob, <laughs> <laughs> just a sad boy. <laughs> Crying at other people <laughs> winning. I've never won a <laughs> raffle in my life. When my mom I, used to set up these things with like it was like a talent show with all my friends, mm. and even then I wouldn't win. Like they would all <laughs> win. I'm like, my mom's the fucking judge. What the fuck? Uh, mom, I always got most generous. I'm like, that's not an award. <laughs> anyway. Well, you're generous. That was the only thing she could ever think to say but about me. I think I think you guys have been prepared for life better because I won a lot of shit early. You in You got my like life. mountains of ass in high like, school. Didn't you? you had a choice of I yes. did okay, yeah, and and sports and all that stuff, and I I won raffles. I like won a soccer ball my wow. first raffle because I wished no, for you're it. Chris Brocha. And my mom was like, "That's right, you put your mind to it, you could do whatever yeah. you want." And I was like, "You goddamn right, Kate." And I like <laughs> have just spent my life agreeing with that because why wouldn't it? And I just have been stunned ever since when <laughs> things don't work out. Do you know that people, successful people, really do write shit down and put shit out there verbally? Yeah. It's like a bit. It's like a real thing that. Well, I lose Jim a debit Carey. card every week. <laughs> <laughs> I am shedding debit cards. <laughs> I've lost my passport so many times. I'm on like an actual oh watch list. Like they, I have. To, I am definitely on a federal watch list. <laughs> she shouldn't leave or come back in the country. <laughs> she, this dumb, was, dumb skank. She's either stupid or she's a spy. <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> like either no one is this dumb. Yeah, it's no. impossible that she's she, not sneaky. She married a firefighter. <laughs> this, either she's just stupid or uh, brilliant. Or brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. So All did over. you shoot a special? No, I was on Amy's. It was Amy's. Uh, it was. Schumer and Friends was How'd the name of the special. It was like Netflix and so we all was did it like outside sets. No, it was inside. God, I hate an outside show. Nothing oh. unfunnier than wind. There's a gentle <laughs> breeze interrupting so a fucking true. punchline. It's disgusting. Or oh, just hearing a, just a cat or a car door. Oh, or, or the bouncy the, house next to the Skankfest yeah. outdoor stage. Playing <laughs> <laughs> hacky sack near the stage. Just oh, that was fucking I actually like that, that one, though. That was, was the only outdoor really? stage that I've liked. It was all right, but it was still annoying. 
I don't yeah. like it. You hear a car going by and the highway in the distance. I mean, because of the pandemic, I am wildly used to all that shit. I got heckled by like a crackhead in Coney Island while I was performing <laughs> to cars. So there was no laughs to be had. There's beeps, there's flashes. <laughs> and then this, this guy's like, fuck you, bro. Like from outside the fence and just threatening <laughs> my life. And I'm just like, this is Why awesome. was he so furious? <laughs> uh, he was so mad. But he like, he said I was nothing. And I was like, I've never agreed more, dude. <laughs> I'm in Coney Island during the pandemic. Like he said you were nothing yeah. and you agreed with him. And I was just like, I know you're right. like the loveliest for why was what joke made him this furious? He was uh Perhaps he just noticed like, light. <laughs> so right. I He's think just he just was at shouting himself. at the light. Well, we yeah. did the Conan the Colin thing, the HBO thing. Yes. And that was talking to the microphone. We can't hear you. Sorry. Just turn it towards your mouth. All right. Yeah, move. Okay, Bobby, I don't understand hey. stuff. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm just a fool in a hole, a pointless hole. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> it's one of the funniest things. These it's one of the funniest sometimes. things that she does. Um, she, she, she remembers me when I was sexy. Oh, she does sexy that, Bobby she does that, the day. that voice. All the waitresses used to be like, it's my turn, it's my turn. I want Bobby Dick tonight. Bobby said he put me in the pictures if I sat in his lap naked for a half an hour. <laughs> There was always a sad waitress at the end of the night waiting for leather jacket Bobby. <laughs> Some waitress fucking believing in his horse shit. And you're just waiting. Ah, <laughs> I love you. His moves were hilarious. You just give like a slow face rake. I'll see you later, all right? I'll see you after my 1210. Well, you know I'll never see him. He's a bad boy. <laughs> He'll never. I told him I was special. I told him I had a golden <laughs> pussy, but he didn't believe me. <laughs> All right, I got now. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing so hard at, because of how different it is now. Yeah, no, it was an insult that didn't need to be. I mean, we got that. I mean, you could have let me just have a couple. Uh, 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 I'll be back. I mean, I know. I've been saying that for eight years. I bet you could. Come back fully? No. No, you can't get abs. You're done in that respect. All right, but, let's settle down. But I mean, it could, could happen if there was a lot of You could be effort. like the guy from American History X who is now like a power lifter, looks big, and, you know, just just does power lifting. Um, I don't know. I would do want to get thin this summer. I want to just get thinner. Because my I, – I, talking about this, we'll bring this up. You asked me how my special. I shot my special. Oh, that's awesome. This you all right there, fucking camera guy who just bumped into the fucking camera? Did she did you fuck dude? <laughs> worry about that camera. <laughs> not this one, you fucking asshole. <laughs> that's coverage. You're videotaping, right? You're not taking pictures. Yeah, we're videotaping. We're taking pictures too. We'll let you have f- approval. Oh g- oh god, it's terrible. They have can I have approval? They say that's the after meanest years things. of being mistreated yes, in the business, say, Bobby. You, know the you wait a minute. You're to ask me? you're telling me I don't <laughs> yeah. about mean things being said? Whale, I any yeah. uh, uh fucking orca, butter bean, fatso, fat fuck, you're gonna die. Your kid's not gonna have a dad. Please don't tell me about mean things being said. Okay? I can't go to Reddit. Ev- Luis oh, Gomez no. said, don't. Go, and I go, me? He goes, yes. No, you don't go to Reddit. Yeah, Specifically. Don't. There's no reason. Yeah, dude. So don't tell. I get mean shit, too. Every photo that's ever taken of me is, I. There's, if you read comments, they're underneath it. It's just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. And I accept it. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. I don't read. I don't read nice comics. I don't read good ones. Yeah, I do. I care about all of it. Do you really? I don't. Yeah, I mean. I try, I try, I work on it, I try, but I just want people to like, <laughs> like me, Bobby. No, I mean, I am such a people please. Like, I, like, during COVID, I never cared. I was like, whatever, what am I supposed to do now? Fine. Because I don't care about disease or death. I never worry about that. All I worry about is people are, are mad at me. I've never cared about death. Uh, <laughs> no fear of death, just more fear that somebody's mad at me. No. Why somebody, I'm thinking about why somebody didn't call me back. I'm not thinking about death. Yeah. Really? Yeah, no. Everybody's always like death. I'm like, hmm. Doesn't come up much. It's no, but somebody said my arms were fat on Twitter six years ago, and I can tell you his entire name, <laughs> <laughs> the town he came up in. With the I describe his fun-loving family photo. Ray, you gotta let it go. That's he always tweeted the best. at me, fat arms, no question mark. He wanted me to co-sign his insult. 
<laughs> She's like, know. fat arms, no. Isn't that always yeah. the best when somebody just like viciously insults you? You go to their profile and it's a picture of like them with their daughter and yeah. dog. And you're like, just a fucking All right. dog and a flag <laughs> and a cross, this <laughs> fucking prick. It, it, it sucks because bullying back in the day was in, I think, junior high and high school. Mm. And then you went to college and bullying was pretty much over. You didn't really get bullied. And then I think it, workplace bullying has been happening for a long time, though. But I, yeah, but not. You could still fight it out or something, yeah. and but now it's like you get bullied. You're, I'm 51. I get bu- verbally, I get verbally bullied when I turn my phone on, <laughs> and I and I be like, I love you too, son. Thanks, honey. And then I go to Twitter, and I'm like, huh? And it's just, <laughs> it's just being attacked. Isn't that funny? And I just tr- all I tried to do is put a tweet out, <laughs> and I put the wrong Remote. two in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put the other two. Yeah. You fucking fat dumb fuck. <laughs> it's like okay, well I'm out. I'm out. I am not, you, you know, I am not uh, Tim Dillon. <laughs> I don't know how to tweet. Certain people that do things great. You know Certain people, people love that shit, too. But I feel like Gomez you loves. give a fuck. Like, huh? you could say anything. Like, I feel like that, like. Yeah, because he doesn't, he knows he what doesn't it is. Care. Like, he no, because he knows he, who he is. Yeah. yeah. He accepts, he accepts who he is. And he knows that this is all that? bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> drugs. Yeah, it's it's uh, it bothers me every single time I take a moment from looking at my son in the eyes to uh. look at my phone for somebody to call me gay. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it, it's it terrible. Me. Every single time I'm like, man, I just could have had a real well, connection <laughs> with my boy, and instead I'm like, hurt again. Yeah. <laughs> I remember old ones too, ancient ones. Like I remember in seventh grade when a guy was like, it seems like the thighs that you're at. The space at the top of your thighs is like way bigger. And then the rest of your legs are like normal. What happened with that? Like he wanted answers for his insult. He wanted me to write up a report to explain my thighs to him. I love this guy. He walked me home. I thought that was gonna be the moment. But no, he was like, can you, can I get some hard answers about what's mangled about your thighs? Uh, it's not good. Me. No, it's not good. It's not okay. I'm but you're okay. You're beautiful. Thanks, Bob. You have a beautiful Thanks, Bob. baby. And you have a beautiful husband mm. who who saves lives. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I have a wife <laughs> that makes PBJ snow. Dawn is incredible. No, she's incredible. Anyways, I shot my special this week. I want to talk. First of all, I want to say thank you to Coastal Creatives. I want to thank everybody at Sidesplitters, the whole crew of Coastal Creatives and Sidesplitters. Um, and I want to thank Leah and uh, Louie and... Uh, the Marx Brothers. I want to thank all the ladybugs too. Ladybugs are fucking great. All the fans of the podcast sent sent all this cakes and desserts and all this congratulation shit. That's and awesome. They all spent their own money and had it shipped out there. And, and when I got off stage, there was all this stuff waiting for me and cards. That's and pretty lovely. It was fucking. I it was so unexpected and so amazing. And a bunch of them flew in and were there and Fuck drove you. in for it. So. <laughs> It was uh, it was great, but it was holy shit. I mean, it was we took this room and made it into this insane club. It was like this open warehouse, and then Louis' people went in and just I I said this is what I want, and then they fucking made it. Wow! That's sick. And it was I mean fucking beautiful, Pr- really surreal. What was the situ- What was the set? Um, I wanted it to look like uh, Elvis's 68 comeback special <laughs> in that cool. square awesome. where people were just around you and then yeah, kind of went yeah, up. Yeah. Is that why it had, it had fencing too, right? Well, the fencing was around the top. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so we had pe- there was a little balcony, and then I wanted uh, I wanted a band to bring me on. I've always wanted a live band to bring me on, mm. and Mike Calta's band, Pitbull Toddler. <laughs> I'm like, why are we looking for a band? And I was like, Mike, because I, I don't want him to work on my, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, will you do it? And he's like, yeah, we'll do it. He's okay. called everybody. Oh, Pete, Gal, awesome. every, the whole band came. They had to show up early. They were there all fucking day rehearsing. And, that's really lovely. Uh, they brought me on. So it's like, here, here's I'm building up, building up. Louis directing this thing. And it's it looks so pretty. It's, it's so nice. This huge team got together to put this thing together, and and um, I'm waiting by the door. It's sold out in 15 minutes, both shows. It's like this is awesome, and I'm wait. I'm fucking been working and working at this, 
and and they see and I hear Mike up there, but then, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Kelly. And I open the door and I walk out in this fucking asshole who we went to the bathroom <laughs> late, just runs in front of the shot. Uh, she goes, ha, ha, sorry. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I hope they have I hope they have my entrance. Keep that in. That's so I hope they have the entrance of me going, I looked at her like fucking <laughs> so mad. It's so funny. Because I know it wasn't a fan of mine. Uh-huh. It was a f- Fucking fan of mine's friend, dog. Yeah. Whoever he was banging. Somebody was. Because if a fan of mine wouldn't fucking move, (laughs) a fan of mine wouldn't fucking move her wet. I have to pee twat from her seat. (laughs) This one's like I gotta go to the bathroom. Just wait. I have to go. What do you want me to do? Pee. I'll be right back. And then went. And the guy was like, wait, 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 wait. And he said, just let me go back. And she ran right in front of me. (laughs) And I heard, I heard, sorry. So somebody tried to stop her. I, look, oh. they said my name, and she ran through the shot. You and Chappelle. Amazing. So I'm like, what the vet? But the, And I get on stage, and my knee on that Monday, I put in a sock on, and I pulled it out of oh, a whack. Fuck. Had to go have 10 ounces of fluid drained from my knee. I had to have a shot in my knee. Oh. So I'm like, you know what? It's good. That morning, I'm putting a sock on, like a fatso. And I and I pulled it again. I go on stage, my knee buckles and folds. Like I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna fall. Like my knee is gonna give out. Yeah. And I'm I'm like putting all my pressure on my left side. It's, but I'm like, whatever, we got it. Uh-huh. We got it. <laughs> I get into the, the the flow, right? We're driving. Vroom, vroom. I'm hitting gears, gung, 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 gung. I'm killing, bang, 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 bang. Bang, bang, around 25, 30 minutes in, bang, bang, bang. Help her. Huh? Help her. Please, somebody help her. What? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I look front, second row, center stage. Some poor guy's wife had an episode. What kind of episode? <laughs> you can't say episode. She's, I don't know what it was. What, was she coming or dying? She's, I, she's like this. Episode. <laughs> An episode of what? Frasier? I I don't know. She was not moving. Oh dear. And it was hot in there. They got new ACs and everything, but they didn't account for the 400 people that were going to fucking be in there. So, and there was no power of bad boy Bobby. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, you guys. We can edit that out if you please. (laughs) What is that? I said with the power of bad boy Bobby. That's what happens to ladies. What really happened so, was Bobby popped his collar in that moment and her yeah, heart she exploded. She was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look at this poor guy. I felt so bad. I'm like, is she okay? And he's like, no, she's not. He was panting. His wife, oh, something no. happened to his girl. Yeah. And, I, my, and I, I, was, I, gave my, I was like, take my water. And then everything just went nuts. People just came out. People will get out of the seats. They started just putting chairs from the audience up on the stage. Oh, and then I wait, stepped what? off the stage. I'm by the back doors. And I'm just sitting there looking at, like, I'm out of body experience. Yeah. Were you doing two shows? Was this it? I Settle down sorry, before you bury right. the story. I'm sorry. Oh, I wish Pete was here to tell you to shut up. <laughs> I, <laughs> was, was it hap- what happened at the end? <laughs> but what happened at the end? My tits are like, confused. It's like watching a movie with my wife. <laughs> Does he survive? Uh, I don't know, dum dum. Let's right. watch the fair movie. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm 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 literally I felt like I was in a car accident. You know you drive it along. Yeah. You ever get in a car and then all of a sudden you're just on the side of the road with my socks <laughs> off. Like are you all right? I don't know. What? Oh my god. I was so Holy I was literally shit. just a fucking killing it. Bing, bang, what's up? Giving those fucking, the special looks. Was it the lady that walked in front? No. Oh, that would have been instant karma. Nope. I mean, they shut the show down, dude. It was fucking nuts. And then Louis was like, we're good. (laughs) Hilarious. They got the poor lady out. And then they filled the seats as quick as they could. And they're like, go ahead. And I'm like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) Did you talk about it? I did, but I don't know what I said. It was like being in a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I was getting laughs on it. Did anybody come out and do comedy <laughs> before you? I had a kid. Oh, we, let's get to that at the end. I had somebody go on before me, do 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Then the band played one song, and then they introed music me on. Yeah. So it was it was perfect. But it was a little, it was really hot. 
I had a towel. I was just I, now I'm fucking. <laughs> I'm just temperature is really important with it. Very important. Yeah. You got to have them cold. Everything you has to be cold. Have to be cold. And I go back on stage. I I do the rest. I I don't in my head. I'm going. I'm missing jokes. I'm like I'm. I forgot my set list. I didn't know where I was, and I didn't know where I was going. Oh. So I was like, I'm forgetting a chunk. I'm forgetting a chunk. Just do this joke. I know, but if I do that, I'm literally talking to myself in my head. Mm. I get off. Hey, and it was. I mean, listen. No, I, I bing, bang, boom, you know, professional 20, 30 years in the business. But you want to feel that. Yeah, yeah. You want to feel that fucking, I'm killing it. I this is like great. I feel like you don't when you tape a special fully, right? Like, there's a part of it that's very mechanical and you're watching it. Like, Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've, I, I've had the opposite where I have felt it. Like, the, it's, mm-hmm. it's typically the first show because the second show for me has always been a little more rowdy and too drunk because my mm-hmm. friends go to that and they're super excited about it. Yeah. It's like, whenever podcast fans or anything like that, yeah. that's usually the good one. Well, this one was... Although I will say... Oh, sorry. Okay. When I was taping my special, like, <laughs> years and years ago, um, and uh, in, like, an old Comedy Central hour, actually, Louis said to me, we were on tour that... Louise said to me that the first, I was like, the first show was. Talking really to the hot. microphones, sweetie. The first show was really. If you had hot. headphones on, you'd hear. All right, it. all right, shut your mouth. Well, I mean, Watch listen. Watch your mouth, Bobby. Listen. You're on thin <laughs> fucking ice. I want you to just. You see this I little wanna... Jew fist? Do you want me to do my wind up move with it? Because it's don't terrifying. Want, I want people to hear you. <laughs> you sound great right now, and you're like Voss. Anyways, I was going over to here. And that <laughs> all right, was... fair enough. You've don't scolded me enough times. Well, I mean. The Voss thing is what tipped it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Voss thing, that really hurt. I mean, that's what's the most unnecessary. Just right there is good. That's great. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> just do it. He was like, the first show is going to be, I'm like, the first show is unbelievable. The second show, they were like kind of drunk, but whatever. But I got it in the first show. He's like, the second show is your show. The show when you're working for it, uh, like in the edit. But I feel like sometimes that happens. The show where you feel like you have I always, all. I nail the first one. I nail the but first But then when one. you watch the, the second th- one is like, let's have fun. Right, but then when you watch it, when yeah. you're in the edit, sometimes yeah. the second one is the one that you end up using more of because that one you're really like trying. Like the first one's like free, you're kind of all over the place. The crowd might have loved you more, but I find the second show is often the show where you like are more precise because you're working harder. I was maybe uh, maybe I was, I was surprised at how much of the second because I've yeah. typically my first my first album it was yeah. almost it was like ninety nine percent first show, second uh, the one I filmed downstairs. <clears throat> that was almost all first show. And then this one, I had like, it was probably like 60, 40. I was surprised. Yeah. And I left the first show being like, I think that's it. Yeah. The second show, it's like, sometimes you settle in where the first one might be so mechanical because you want to get like the mm-hmm. verbiage down mm-hmm. perfectly, all the transitions that you've worked out, everything that I've just like beaten into. But I sometimes like come off as if I'm reciting and it doesn't feel alive. Right, right. And then the second show is where it's like it loosens up a bit and you're almost more conversational. But the, the problem with that is if I went up and did the first show regular, that might be the case. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, yeah. Th- I mean, this, this situation yeah, is insane. Was, you're right, 900 whole degrees. I'm, sw- I'm small. I'm hot. That ha- I'm off stage. I'm doing And then all of a sudden I'm just, I'm, I'm a regular person emergency. trying to help out an accident, you know? Question. Yeah. Did you find out what happened? Yeah, no, did you send an edible know. arrangement? They sent me, the guy sent me a uh, message, and this is how old I am. I don't know what it, what uh, what it was, if it was Facebook or, or Instagram, but he sent me a message. Hey, I'm sorry about my wife, what happened. She's fine. We love you. Hope to see you in Side Splitters again. And then I don't know where it went. Like, after yeah, you yeah. read it, sometimes it goes away. So she's fine. That's good. But I went back into the room, and I'm fucked. I'm <laughs> fucked. Yeah. I'm fucked. I'm like, fuck. Louis came back. He go, he was like, "That's great." I'm like, "No, it wasn't. I know it wasn't. I didn't enjoy it, mm. and I I don't know what the fuck happened. I mean, even the end, like Max was gonna come out at the end, and I said, "I'm gonna say, bang, bang, bang." When I step back, that's when you send him out. I step back, and I'm still out there. So I look like I'm just like, just give me Waiting more. <laughs> So uh, the lights came comes on. I'm like, like just I, in my head, I'm like, send the fucking kid out. <laughs> what do you want me to stay out here for? In my head, I'm yelling this. Where the fuck is he? Yeah. And then I'm like, fuck it. I just walked off because uh. I'm like, this is all fucked up. No, but some. And then all of a sudden, Max you. comes sh- running out, and he ran right up on stage. And I was like, okay, I go up, and it was really cute what he did. 
He's like, I want to thank you for watching my dad's special. Aww. I'll give it up for Mike Calta's band. That's and then so he high fived everybody. <laughs> and then he took my hand and we had walked away holding hands. Wow. So it was a nice moment. And, you know, it was, you know, but we go to the back. I was that, so that fucked. That made me well up. That was nice. It was really nice. I guess the way that happened, yeah. I guess. But Louis had to give me, he gave me a Martin Luther King, JFK, uh, Ali speech. Al Pacino. And, and then at the that. end of it, he showed me a Tom Brady inspirational video. That's where I was at. Where he was like, dude, watch this video. Like, I was like, fuck. And then my eye hurt. I got a fucking stress headache in my eye. Oh, my God, <laughs> oh my God. dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then he told me this really, I mean, he really <laughs> opened up about his last special. Mm-hmm. The first, you know, one that he shot. It was, you know, that first one was not good. And. And did he show you some Steve Harvey memes? <laughs> Steve, Har- let me. Can I just say something? I'll fucking, I'll defend Steve Harvey till the day I die. Holy shit, is he fucking inspirational? <laughs> inspirational. My God, when is Steve Harvey? Harvey? What? Those memes are some of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life, dude. You're sincere. Be please. humble and grateful. <laughs> he goes. This is the thing. Be grateful. Yeah. Be humble. Right. And be grateful, and you'll be happy. Yeah, a lot of people have said that, but I don't believe Steve Harvey wrote that. That's an original SH. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, no, then he came up with this concept of gratefulness. I like Be Steve Harvey. Be kind to one another. <laughs> Listen, I'm a I'm a common person. I, Steve Harvey is very inspirational to me. Okay, Bobby. You don't like Steve Harvey. I'm not trying to get uh, no. Why are you so angry? Settle the fuck down. You're Bobby, snapping at fuck me. Fuck you, Bobby. What, you, she's snapping at me. I think I said a lot of nice, fun loving things. Yeah, to but me. you're snapping at uh for some I'm reason. A comic. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go over there and fan you? Should I bake you something? <laughs> no, just be nice. We're I mean just joking just... around, Bobby. It's a podcast. <laughs> you're being very I talked about the amount of pussy you got back in the I day. I say I like Steve Harvey. You <laughs> start yelling at me. I say I like Steve Harvey, you fucking snap. Fuck you, you fucking dumb. You know what? Plot. Let's take it to the fucking tape because I think oh, I said go some pretty sweet yourself. things. And you called me an idiot a couple times, Bobby. No, your saying. husband did. Oh, if we can look at the tape later, I'm pretty sure Bobby says meaner things to me. But no, I haven't said concept. anything. I've only complimented. I say you look beautiful. I say you look great. I've said nothing but nice thing, nice Bobby, things about you. I'm Rachel, sorry. Shut your face. <laughs> she's supposed to be. She's supposed to go against positivity. No, Steve we're Harvey. just having a fun moment about Steve Harvey. I like he's Steve a, Harvey. He's he's hilarious on Family Feud. I like yes, I love I Family mean, Feud. Is. I was just joking about his inspiration. I'm not like taking no, a stance cor- against him. I mean, correct. Thank you. You're correct. Thank you. Bobby is out of his I love, mind. You. I love that she was sincerely being I love, inspired I love, by Steve I, Harvey. I am inspired by Steve Harvey. Maybe I am. Thank you. I, I just thought it was like a funny thing to mock. No, I'm 100 on your side. I don't. I don't agree with either one of you. I think I will stand by Steve Harvey. I like Steve Harvey. <laughs> you can like Steve Harvey. No, I like his inspiration. You gotta yeah. expect the but comics are gonna find that funny. It's Why like, are you it's like, yelling at me again? It's like Michael Scott. Is she Wayne yelling? Bradsky. Listen, just saying I agree with you about the Steve Harvey thing. Is a little queer, <laughs> but is she fucking snapping? I think she I'm justified. saying something emphatically on a podcast. I, I don't know what emphatically means, but I if guess, that means I guess mean, it means you're a terrible, evil cunt. <laughs> 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 I'm a, I just also, like, this will be the funniest I, thing. What could mean less to me? This is Steve Harvey. It's the funniest thing for <laughs> things to break down emotionally between me and Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> what but was I, it about? I use Steve Harvey quotes to get over it. Steve Harvey <laughs> memes weren't particularly inspirational. Have you read Think Like a Man 2? I never cared about anything less. Than think Like a Man 1 was great. <laughs> was it? No, I have no idea. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Think Like a Man is amazing. Mm-hmm. Sure. No, I have read it. I've put bookmarks in it. So <laughs> she's just a cunt. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> I, no, because they're hilarious. I think things like that are uh, funny. What is funny about it? Just those mm. kinds of quotes are funny. They make me laugh sometimes. Right. Somebody, you know. No, I don't care jogging. about that. I joke with no, Billy about it all the time. We always send them back and forth. Billy, I Burner. don't care about that. I think that's funny. At least funny. sends me Steve Harvey things to make me laugh. Like all I let me let me say, let me ask you a question. It's not. It's not that. Mm-hmm. It's not. I have no problem with you. It's the way you're talking to me. Is I don't like, and it probably has to do with my wife. I think so. It has to do with like I'm happy she's to like, be here. She's yelling. <laughs> no, if this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Look, life can be overwhelming, and a lot of people don't even know they're burnt out when they are. You ever have lack of motivation, or ever felt helpless, or trapped, detached, or fatigued? We associate burnout with work. 
but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in our life can lead us to feel burnt out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. I'm telling you, uh, I don't even know. I didn't even know I had anxiety. I thought I was a big, tough guy from Boston, you know, and uh, this is the way it is, and this is the way you deal with people and, blah, 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 and scream and yell. No, I had anxiety. I had anxiety problems, and you know what helped me? Talking to somebody. Somebody realized, hey, you just have anxiety. Hey, this is when you do this, when you get tired, when you're all, you want to go take a nap, or depressed, or you want to eat. You're anxious. You're anxious. Just relax. You know it's going to be all right. Talking to another person is the only thing that saved me, and I can guarantee it. You will help you. It will help you because you might not even know you need help. So try this out. BetterHelp is, is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't even have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And you know what, dude, listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash dude. That's BetterHelp.com slash dude. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash dude. Dude. Have you ever had one of those moments where you realize it's time to find a new place? At Apartments.com, they call that an out-of-apartment experience. You Maybe you're lugging the luggage down a six-floor walk-up. Boo. Then the bag bursts open before you reach the dumpster. Oh, God. I've had those days. Or maybe, uh, you know, you just, you're, you're going to be a parent. You know, you realize you have uh, a kid on the way and you need another room. Okay? Well, these things happen. The first thing you need to do when you have one of these out of apartment experiences is start your search for a new place at apartments.com. They help millions of renters find their perfect place to live, whether it's an apartment, townhome, condo, or even a house. And with their 3D virtual tours, you can scour every inch of the listing because sometimes Two dimensions aren't enough. The features don't end there, my friend. Apartments.com also has a powerful search tool that will help you find a place that meets all your requirements. So when you're having one of those moments, take a moment and check out Apartments.com, the place to find a place. This week's YKWD is brought to you by Policy Genius. Okay, why get life insurance? How about this? If somebody relies upon you financially, you have a house, you have cars, you have bills, you have a child, uh, a wife. Yeah, that, that's why I get life insurance. It's peace of mind for you and for them, just in case something happens. It's a cushion it, it just for, for everybody in your life that loves you. The typical life insurance gets more expensive as you age. So it's smart to get a policy sooner rather than later. Don't worry about the price. I'm telling you, by making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure you're not paying a cent more than you have to for your coverage needs. Okay, here we go. Policy Genius is one stop shop to find insurance you need at the right price. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash YKWD. To get started in minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The licensed agents at Policy Genius are on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options and make decisions with confidence. The Policy Genius team works with you not the insurance companies. Policy Genius doesn't add extra fees, doesn't sell your information to third parties. All right? They, they have uh, thousands of five-star reviews across Google and Trustpilot with options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoids unnecessary medical exams. All right? Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and placed over $150 billion in coverage. Head to policygenius.com slash YKWD to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you can save.
What's going on? It's Robert Kelly here, and I want you to join my Patreon. I got this. Why is Andrew Schultz sitting like a lesbian? I got that. Take a look. <laughs> this too. Oh, what's in the box, dude? Oh, whoa, I've been waiting months for this. Come check this out. Oh, no. All right, we have a special guest coming in. Your background, what is that? Hold on a second, somebody's teasing me. Hold on a second, that's not my fault. Okay, sorry. <laughs> this is on there. I think we definitely empowered trolls. Jeez. We gave trolls a template for how to nail each other. And this. Less Titty Challenge. Yeah. Oh, shit. Did you break your bed? It don't matter. I think that's it. Nope, you get this too. Dead, 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 dead. Thank it's you. always been fun to be friends with you <laughs> doing stand-up comedy all these years. So hit the button, click it, patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. You'll thank me later. Patreon.com with Robert Kelly. I talked to Uncle Judah and Johnny Shack the other day. It's good for business. No, uh, why? Cam and try to also, use a gentler tone. That's, I like when you talk like that. That's what you should talk the rest of the show. It's also fun to snap about Steve Harvey. That, yeah, it is fun. funny. It that's is a funny. Fun, that's a funny. If that was the point. thing, and then I just softly left yeah. the studio. We couldn't work it out. <laughs> what the fuck I'm do you mean? like? Bar family barbecues for years. You I never <laughs> heard when I said Steve Harvey's comments weren't particularly inspirational. It's not about the Steve Harvey. It's not about. She doesn't get it. She doesn't I get do. just it's like my wife. Sound just voice. like my wife doesn't it's, get I it. I get it because I've read no, my own don't. comments. There's something no, distasteful No, because you fucking about get it. You know, oh, fuck you, Bobby. That's the way. Oh, fuck you, Bobby. How do you want me to respond to that? Nicely? I don't I like I am obviously a fun-loving fuck you or comics. I'm just joking around. I'm happy uh, to be here, Bobby. I think it's your raspy voice. There's something wrong with your voice. I am losing my voice, but I still came because I like my friend Bobby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sensitive. And he told I'm me that sensitive. there was something wrong. I'm very sensitive. And I think I need a Steve Harvey quote You're right a wide-open wound. I'm a wide-open wound. <laughs> <laughs> I have women issues. It's not yeah, I, I mean, this, this show sounds traumatic. Just to bring it back. <laughs> yeah, please take it anywhere else. What's up, baby? <laughs> I think Rachel was wrong, but I could have been wrong. That's okay. I, <laughs> I fucking hate you, <laughs> neutral boy. No, I mean, there's probably most people do say that there's Listen, something distasteful about me. I read my own comments. Nobody seems my, to care for me particularly. My, <laughs> That's what I said. I'm sensitive. My, my, my biggest fear... On that special was going back out there. I was fucking for your second show. Yeah, you and know, I was. I'm gonna fuck this whole thing up. I'm gonna fuck it all up. Mm. I was hot. It was like 900 degrees. Louis, to his credit, fixed the monitors, put fans on the stage, put a fan shooting down on me. Nice. He went out and just said, "Do this, do that," and changed the whole fucking thing. I went out there the second show. I didn't have to wipe my head once. I fucked up one joke. <laughs> One joke at the end. I fucked up. I, I, I did it backwards. And I did, I, I, I like mixed two jokes. I went, and I was like looking out. And I just went, ah, suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was just like, and then I tried to, I was like, yeah, man. And I tried to redo it. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> just a nice reset. You should put that in the special because that's funny. Those moments are funny. I don't know if it will play. If it plays, do I would. I don't care. If it plays, look at it. Yeah. But do it after. Well, like actually, the, the one of the ladybugs came up to me after. He goes, you lost your way at the end there. I go, why? He goes, you just went suck my dick out of the... <laughs> don't you love when people give you a report about your own show? It was right though. I mean, yeah. it was the exact moment when like I was like, yeah. ah, "Fucking but suck that, my dick." Yeah, but, but sometimes those those moments are tricky because sometimes when you say what you're actually thinking in the moment, like something great comes out of that. So it's like you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I get you. I mean, it's we're gonna put a bunch of that shit why, in. Why don't you? Yeah, why don't you just put it post the close, like during the know. credits? I did that with uh, my second show at the VU. There was two 
two Chinese men that were speaking full volume Mandarin for the first 25 minutes of my set. They had no idea that comedy was even happening. They thought they were waiting for music. And I had to bend down and be like, this isn't the fish market. What's happening? Why are you talking? Did you so say the fucking- fish market? Yeah, I said something like crazy shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. But uh, I kept that at the end of my special. You said the fish market line in the special? I think I might have. Yeah. Nice. I said so- I said something about like them also giving me a pressure point and like uh-huh. sending me back to the home. Land or something. like it's some crazy. You could also keep something at the end of society. this. <laughs> that you could all that shocked me too. I'm like mm-hmm. that. Wow. <laughs> at the end of the special, you could also. Like, he's the last person I would have ever thought would be like, and then we put it right in. <laughs> it's at the end. You got to really watch it. To watch but, it. <laughs> you know, the end of the, if you're, the special. What I was going to say was, if I can yeah. still have a voice. Maybe that's the problem. I'm losing my voice. I think but it's your 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 voice. My voice. I am. Losing I think my it, voice, when you yeah. yell, it comes across as very mean. Well, but I'm sorry. I love you. You know. That. Um, I'm pa- I apologize. No, I'll, I did. apologize for some guy named Mr. Twat Waffles did say I have a man voice like seven years ago <laughs> under a video, and it stuck with me. They're like man voice. That's her problem. I'm and they'll sorry. break into little sub comments yeah. trying to figure out what exactly is wrong with me. So that'll be fun to watch this happen. Here. I think the comments are going to go for you because they usually turn on me. But they all but, you also agreed last week that you have tone issues. That's the I do have tone issues. Back. Yeah, but I also have I believe uh, with my wife when she. We get along, we get along, we get along. And then she, she in the last couple of years, has been talking to me with this tone. <laughs> like like that. Like, no, why would I say that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I was just asking. Like, It is weird I how was, the switch can be. It was a, it's been a switch, and I've had to tell her lately, like in the last like six months, you got to stop talking to me like that. Cause you got to check her. You got to check her. No, I don't want to yell. Like my biggest thing is like I don't want to have arguments now. I don't want to fight. Like I don't want to fight in front of the kid. I don't want to do this. Can we just figure ways around this? And she's but I don't know if it's what it is, but she's been Sometimes this, how people grew up too. Like my husband she, yells, I'm not a yeller. Like I I'm a yeller. I don't like yelling. I'm trying to get yeah. rid of it. I don't yell. But she Dawn doesn't anymore. yell, but she's got fucking tone issues now, like Rachel. No, please. I <laughs> I'm like the quiet one, I but I it'll take so much. I don't raise my voice, but he will yell in a second about whatever, and I'm like, you can't do that. Such a man. My wife will raise her voice as well. She has these moments. She's awesome. We get along so well all the time. We're really great at communicating, and then out of nowhere, she'll shark eye black and just be inhuman. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, whoa, like what a does, cool. Where I'm like, who did you just become? Like, <laughs> yeah. he'll punch my, my a wife fucking is... microwave, and I'm like, wait, Pete, this is about <laughs> punches a microwave. I love that. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> my like, wife yeah, too. Yeah, like just he'll lose it, and I'm like, did you, you see know what a, just happened? Our relationship is good. If there's just dents in the fridge, yeah. and you put her in her, it goes right around her head. <laughs> 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 yeah, you could fit her for a hat with the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how I check Bitcoin every day. I look it up at Bitcoin. I look Bitcoin and Ethereum to see if he's gonna come home and punch a microwave. <laughs> Bitcoin's down. That fucking microwave. <laughs> Lately, it's so rough. Oh, he must be punching that fucking. Why do you think I'm here so long? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting till he's fast asleep. Yeah, I think she's pre-menopause in the last couple of years, and she gets this fucking thing that happens. She's she, I, she was like, I'm gonna go to this person. It costs. I was like, do whatever you gotta do. Because I don't want to fucking. She snaps. I said that. That's what. Whoa! What the fuck are you doing? And then I go, don't talk. I go, look. I. I don't want to fucking do this. Yeah. <laughs> I go, but you're making me. I'm making you. Okay. <laughs> you're fucking making me. Fucking do it. You're fucking talking to me like you're fucking one of my friends and you're my wife. Stop talking to me like fucking rich boy. You cock. I'm always um, jealous of people that have temper. I always wanted to have a temper. I wanted to have like an. I will stay. I'm a stayer. I'll stay with somebody for so long. I, I want to be the per- woman that just like flips out and screams something. I took it this sad ashtray I had with a smiley face that somebody gave me in like junior high school. <laughs> Don't ask me why they gave me an ashtray. And I tried to throw it on the side of my house because I was trying to practice having a temper because I like <laughs> saw it in a movie and I wanted to. <laughs> it was the darkest moment just me standing next to my stupid house with so some sad. socks on, just trying to be like, one day I'll stick up for my high, <laughs> just high rainbow socks and yeah. shorts <laughs> and a and a backpack. But it seems cool to be able to, be, you know, like I love those yeah. families. Our family just simmering hostility. Uh, not at Nobody all. said what they thought. You we know? the only emotion we were allowed to express in my home was pure unbridled rage. 
Really? <laughs> yeah, that was it. So we, I'm a stayer and I'm a ah. screamer, but I've actually, I've, I've neutralized myself to the point where I don't really reach those levels anymore. Mm. It, it, it I'm, I'm a happen. fucking, I'm a, I, my mother and st- a screamer. Yeah. I mean. Mine too. And I immediately fucking, you know, because I had that stepdad and I learned fucking you snap. Yeah. And all those shitty people in my life. So, yeah, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to catch it. You're doing good. I know. I'm doing you better. You are doing good. Bobby. I'm doing better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing better. We're all doing good. We're all doing good. Like Steve Harvey said. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, Smile. most Steve, guys would have lost Steve it Harvey on that clip wench. right here. <laughs> Steve what Harvey quote. I want to clip, it takes quote less right here. muscles to smile than it does to frown. <laughs> An original SH. I, love, I don't know why I love him. <laughs> I really do. He helps me out. <laughs> no, I do need to read more books about what men collectively want. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I uh, I went back out on the next special, everything on the next the next show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everything worked. That's great. Everything was great except for that one joke. And the it was great and then the end. But you know, I had this big party set up. This is so sad. Uh, after party. They had all these cakes. Uh Leah had a cake with like me on it. Uh, like Chabby Elvis in the <laughs> It was so fucking great. What happened? They didn't tell anybody about the party. <laughs> so it was just like 15 people. <laughs> Nobody knew that they'd just go out that door and come around the other door. Uh, so uh, everybody just left. And they were like, hey, man, did you have an after I'm like, yeah, there was a big after party. Oh, oh man. Oh, my God. They didn't tell anyone? No. no. What a weird Heads night. Heads are going to roll. Someone <laughs> so this is what happened. Me and Mike were fucking hanging out. A lot of ladybugs came, so yeah. we were like 15. We were hanging out. And a couple of people, uh, Nick and Abby from uh, the watch uh, place down Mayors, and Louie, you know, it was really good, and Leah and her friends. But then everybody left. And they're like, this big cake, and you want cake? And I was like, yeah. no, yeah. I, don't, I don't take cake back to my hotel. I go back. Dawn and Max are in bed. Mike went to sleep. I'm just sitting there like buzzing. Wired. Like yes. I just went to a concert. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, I fucked up that joke. I fucked up that joke. When are they going to get the other joke? They're going to get that lady. What happened to that lady? Oh my God. I mean, just uh, the, the gears are just. And I went outside and I smoked a cigar in downtown City. Did you call Pete. anybody? Those are the moments where you need to talk to a comic and like talk through it all. Like I couldn't. It was like 1.30 in the morning. What, you were going to like morning. wake somebody up or something? I don't know. I just fucking ate it. I just sat there and smoked a cigar. I would have picked up. Huh? I would have picked up. I would have too, and you might have liked the sound of my voice, but I'd be there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't like the tone of your voice. I love your Sorry. voice. Just stop going around the issue, okay? <laughs> you keep saying other Sorry, things. The tone, right? the tone. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I've got to fix about myself, but the tone is the most important. <laughs> Basically, I'm unlovable. Did I say that out loud again? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You're my favorite. You really are. Um, yeah, it was by myself smoking a cigar and first, and it was just you know going to, down to St. Pete. If you've ever been there, no. it's fucking anarchy. It's anarchy. There's people just fucked everywhere. What just, do you mean? This, oh, there was a rock concert across the street. There was just people everywhere. Two in the morning. Just it's just crazy, like Tampa yeah. partying, and it's just lonely Bob smoking a cigar, flipping through Facebook, you know. But getting a lot of nice messages. I bet <clears throat> that was a way that I, I didn't get any, none. No, there were. Well, the I guy found that him, his wife didn't die. I found him. Facebook too- is like in the winter of their life. I'm sure you yeah. had some on Instagram. <laughs> like, you didn't get it from your Aunt Helen, perhaps. Oh, yeah, true. They're all. Yeah. They were in uh, hidden Instagram messages. I found them two days later. I was so sad because I didn't get any. Dude, I, I know was what you mean. Sometimes I'll miss the hidden one. Oh, it's sad. Dude, I went in. I'm like, yeah, all right. There was like two. Hey, good stuff. <laughs> you know? And then the next day I went in and it was, I don't know why there's this unseen messages or something. Yeah, yeah. And I went to in to protect were, you. They were all in there, all the nice messages. <laughs> Protect me from what? Goodness? From feeling good about yourself. Oh, my yeah. God. But, uh, yeah. And then it was Mother's but Day. But you could tell the story at the end of the special. That would be kind of interesting. Like, just talk, like a talking shit thing or like a moment from your podcast where you talk about what happened in the middle of the special because that's kind of fascinating. And yeah. it's funny. Maybe this is that moment. So you guys didn't... Oh, like, that's right. <laughs> let me ask you a question. <laughs> Call me a cunt the and say goodnight. <laughs> Uh, it's good to hear that you guys felt the same way, though. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? It's good to yeah. hear those. I don't know. It's just you good mean to after hear after a taping. Just after a taping, you'd be oh, like, yeah. no, I'm relentlessly in my head, think, oh my going God. over every word, what I miss. Yeah. You also don't have any record of it yet. I'm never able to really internalize it. I'm just right away thinking about three different things, like a, something, a joke I mangled. Yeah. Somebody was that there that I felt misperceived me somehow. And then <laughs> also like a bit that I think I'm gonna get in trouble for later. Yeah. Like I'm I'm like I, I'm literally just writing storylines that haven't occurred in my life. And anything to not let me just take in something positive. It, why can't we take in anything in? Because why do we have to rip it down? Something's wrong. Yeah. We we have to rip <laughs> it apart and down. <laughs> we can never but Mike there are the comics. We were like backstage doing uh last comic standing. And I had such a miserable experience on that show, even though like I made it to like the top ten, but all I was reading everything, mm. and I thought people hate me on such a visceral level. I need to stop. I need to stop it right now. <laughs> yeah. And then I remember telling him, I was like, "How come I could read like positive comments, but then the negative ones are just like they're just I'm thrashing around at night with these fucking people." And he's like, "Cause those are the ones you believe. That's the problem. That's yeah. the one you believe." Yeah. Yeah. You believe the guy with his arms folded in the you back feel- of your show. You don't believe the rest of the people that are throwing panties at you, Bobby. But there is nights where you feel like a nights. genius. There are nights where you're like, I am probably one of the best comics walking earth. Yeah. And that's the thing and- about stand up because the next show, they'll, you'll take it right in the chin. <laughs> you'll be like, maybe I'm on to. People should follow me. And then- <laughs> this should be a much bigger deal. Yeah. And then the next day, you're in even, fucking Tampa even tonight, and someone's going, eh. Like I was it. doing jokes I did on the special so much better tonight than oh, I yeah. did. Like, yeah. I mean, it was like. the I've had better. Like, it, my shows at my special were so great. It was like the most positivity I've had in one room in a long time. I put it all together myself, my own money, all that shit. Then I like let go my first headlining night in another club. I murdered so hard with better versions of every one of those jokes and wanted to like Uh. ask if they shot that in like 460 (laughs) and I'd release that as the special. (laughs) Like, I was like, I thought that too. Yeah. Because you're just like, fuck. Uh, I thought that at the club tonight. I'm not even going to tell you about the microphone that you're not even (laughs) taught. Sorry. I'm not not going to say that. You do whatever you want. You were right. No, do what you I'm want. Put the you do whatever you want. Headlines. It's your life. You live it. Like Steve Harvey said, you have to be grateful for what you got. That is what he said. That's what he said. Okay. Yeah. Um, he also said, bitches ain't <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jeez, I love here's, the quote in front of the sunset. I want to start reading more quotes. Here's the, here, can you bring up some Steve Harvey stuff? Can I please what find got? some? I aim for stuff so big that the dream is bigger than the fear. That's come on, Rach. Look at that on the screen, Bobby. Bring up. Let's find some more about what men want. (laughs) Let's. uh, I'll tell you what men want. It really does look like he's wearing a bald cap. Well, he was wearing a wig for a long time. Yeah, I know. He he had like he had the laser for his lineup. Like his lineup was so crispy. He lasered it. It's great. I'm so glad he took off the wig. Yeah, the wig was disturbing. You knew it was a wig too. Yeah. It was just square. It was just a perfect flat top. It looked like a mic cover. It looked like a hat. Yeah. A, mic, a mic cover. It did. It looked like, yeah. like a short <laughs> SM7B <laughs> mic cover. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, what's that one? This dream is free. The hustle is sold separately. Yeah. It's the pointing that Can really. Can you go to the Instagram? It. His Instagram has a really good video one. I love the latest one. <laughs> Tells you about. <laughs> ah, come on, facial Rach. hair looks like it, it just. Let's looks read like the it was back of it. You want to date my daughter? T-shirt. That's more inspiring. <laughs> do you remember those? Do you remember First, those? you got to date my gun. <laughs> then you got to date this grave, like freshly dug. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> do you remember the magnet thing that you just like would push the facial hair yeah. around oh with a pencil? It was that's, so problematic. That's Steve Harvey. Harvey. <laughs> yeah, that's dark. That's real. That's it. That's a Keith Robinson. Uh, 2007 when he used to just It just it. feels like he's brimming with rage underneath it. Anybody that <laughs> screams about how all your dreams can come true, yeah. I'm sorry, but most of them when you get real close, there's a lot of rage. Yeah. What's the guy's name? Um, the uh, Who's like the big self guy? Tony yes, Robbins. Tony Robbins. Yeah. yeah, and then they're always, the yeah. tales start coming out. What he has think about him? Oh, he's been a naughty boy. No what shit. do you mean? He screamed at some girl. I think he's been up to all. I have no information. Could somebody he's, Google what he's actually? His hands are ghoulish. He's got big. he's got gi- gigantic. He's just like the head of every the, mega church. Yeah. The the that thyroid. Gigantism. Yeah, he's like gigantism. George Mirasan. They had to cut his fucking thing in the back of his head so he'd stop growing. I what? swear to God. Yeah. What, is it, what thing? There's a there's, there's a, a button? thyroid gland 
they have to cut so you just don't grow. He does have like he almost has. I just made that up. Dwarf head on giant body. (laughs) Uh, That's not true. I don't want people. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it's a weird. It's a weird thing because he's proportionate, yeah. but then he's got the the windshield. Most giants have yeah. most giants have that fucking weird yeah. head, but yeah, moon roof. He owns it Whenever people also like run cults, you know those guys. I don't know if you guys saw that Netflix documentary. The guy's name's like Rajneesh. I yeah, think I saw it. Great. Yeah, so ever whenever a guy like runs a, a a cult like that, that he's just on top of this fucking building, wringing his hands out. It's like the most flaccid, useless gesture. It just looks like <laughs> he's like shaking some water off his hands after. Doing the dishes. Like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> These girls are fucking throwing their tits at him, just batting their pussies at him. It's always this like head of a cult. For some reason, they always look like they have like a, a chemical deficiency. It's always yeah. this kind of flaccid. I think it's their, the guys that like didn't get but enough didn't ass they... in high school, so then they can never get enough ass later on. Like there's a critical the puss part, window, yeah. I believe. And but if that that's not filled up, then window. later on you believe you're owed some sort of back puss. And no matter how much ass you can get, it's never going to be enough because you still feel you're owed some sort of back puss. Do you uh, understand what I mean? That's something. Thank that's you. Something. But a woman ran that cult, not him. I know. She did. She helped Tough him. Tough titties. Show. She was a bad. She helped ass. him lure. Yeah. yeah. She, she was ran. He just sat there and wore a fucking uh, a weird Rolex. Well, because he looks like a genie. <laughs> but it she was the perfect was, setup for a cult leader. She was fucking. But he, he was, was the, the one that got her. her. She's the yes. one who bought the real estate. Yeah. They were like, oh, we can't. Oh, we can't be here. Okay, we'll just buy the majority of the town, and we'll vote you out, and then we'll change the name. I mean, they changed the name of the street to like uh, you know Tatiki like Road. And- My mom was yeah. living in this neighborhood in the early or I guess late seventies, early eighties, and uh, over on Barrow Street. And she said they were over here, some of the Rajneeshis. So they were really? walking in there. Go- yeah, it came all the way to New York. Oh my god, it was fucking wild. But what always fucked it up? Rape, pussy. Because no. <laughs> that's what that's what started the downfall, right? Didn't they catch a couple cases? Shh, no, that woman, that woman, what? and him fell out. Oh yeah, he started right. not liking her, right? I like how that's how you I sum it up. That. That's what's they, what fucks they, it up, pussy. He also got like mountains and mountains and mountains, of- and she did too. Yeah, so it fucks it up. It needed to be broken up, Bobby. Right, you're getting angry again. You can have if an you can argument see, I'm on not a angry. podcast. It's I'm an not interesting angry. debate. <laughs> But you're yelling at me, Bobby. You're gonna run a cult soon if you think women need to be like this. All no, your women are gonna. No, be you like, could. T- I'm just saying everything's it. fine, Bobby. <laughs> I'm just, you can How yell. He wants me to talk. No, he wants me to you come on yell. here. You can yell. You can yell. I'm just saying. I don't need I... rules from you. Okay. Fuck off, right. Bobby. Exactly. Okay. Wow. You can. Go, you can be. See, it's me, right? I like that actually. Okay. <laughs> I'm not giving her rules. I'm just saying you're yelling at me. But, Bobby, it's we're debating. So, it's a Fucking podcast. I'm not debating anything. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just giving a counter. I'm just saying that she got a lot of push. She ran the cult. I'm not saying it's a formal debate. We're talking about Rajneesh of all things. He didn't. He, he didn't run the thing. She You're ran right. it. At the end of the day, a woman ruined it all, didn't she? Pussy, yeah. Pussy, <laughs> and it was all her fault. It's all fault yeah. It was her fault because she yeah. had a weird tone of voice, didn't she? And he yeah, fucking yeah. snapped. Yeah, I didn't snap. <laughs> I didn't snap. I'm not snapping. No, you didn't. I didn't snap. Thanks. We're talking about Rajneesh. <laughs> We're talking about Rachel. <laughs> but similar with L. Ron Hubbard, where like you yeah. you watch Going Clear and they're all like, if you met him, he was the most magnetic, charismatic guy. And you're like, he looks like the fucking mad hatter yes. with a dip he, in. He has bad teeth. He had like black yeah. gums and yeah. shit like it's that. Always those guys. Disgusting. He wrote over a thousand books, which imagine what a nightmare super highway his brain is mm. to even churn out that many words. Is he on drugs? Words. I mean, how are you not on Adderall if you're typing that fast? <laughs> Their body always looks kind of liquid, like it's melting. Like they always <laughs> yeah. look like they're actually melting. But then the women just can't throw themselves at They do something. Who's that guy that made everybody play basketball in the middle, middle of the night? Like he would make girls wear Little uniforms Kev? with his name on them. <laughs> like matching Prince? names on them. I don't Prince. Know Prince did that, yeah. yeah. Did he? Prince did yeah. that. Yeah, Prince it's did like weird it's like it's 3 a.m. Bitches, get up, put on my jacket with my oh, name on the was that NBA it. young boy? Isn't there, there's some rapper that like was bragging about how many bitches he got and he was going through his house and it turned out he had like just basically prisoners, like just okay. girls living in bunk beds in various rooms and people were like, is this a cult? Yeah. Dude? 
Yeah. And they can't leave. They're not allowed to go anywhere. And then the girls, yeah. like, they all have, like, matching uniforms. And he makes them play 3 a.m. basketball. It's not enough that they line up and blow them. He's got to have them play mm. basketball with his jacket on. Guy wants to hoop when he wants to hoop. Hey, get a hoop, man. Again, I yeah. believe it's that back puss. I think if there's a critical <laughs> puss window, and if it's not full, or still angry about but there's a, So there's a, an amendment to this theory because it's either Thank back you. puss or too early puss, where you get pussy or, or too rape. late puss. You, sure, but that's back puss. We know Patrice had too late puss. What? He never got pushed when he was younger, but he got pushed when he was older. That's back. No, but that's is back that back push? Yeah, that's part of the back push. That falls under the umbrella yeah. of my back push theory yeah. because there's, a but guy, I, yeah, he was there's too early. Push. There's too early where I had oh, I had yeah. I had I had too early push. and friends that had been really sexual super early in yeah. their you know and then they're just all over the map wild yeah so and and they can't stop and it actually progresses over time it never it what? never plateaus you, yeah no you the can, idea with the back puss it, thing though. is not that the pussy dries you can, up but they didn't no yeah it's not that the pussy dries up later that you can't continue to get ass it's that you, you do but you no matter how much ass you get no matter how many basketball games they play in in, in your matching <laughs> jackets no matter how much they line up and blow you in different humiliating positions you dream up it's not enough you're still yeah. angry about that back post window and that's why you have to keep the basketball games going I and you have a league. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> of shitty basketball players. <laughs> yeah, just a back post league of basketball. I, I mean, that guy just wore like a drippy robe, but he like they couldn't. They were leaving their husbands, their children, everything. Oh, that's awesome. It's like Elvis could have had a cult. Did you see Elvis's concert? He would go out and make out with women in the audience. I didn't know. Like he guys did that. would throw their hus- their wives, go, go. And he would walk over and sing and then and then literally just make out with them. That's like R. Kelly, there except parents with kids but- just hoisting them up <laughs> yeah. in the backstage. Uh-huh. Like, can you get her a record deal? He would kiss them, like <laughs> like literally like tongue kiss. Yeah. I mean he got his thirteen year old bride that way. <laughs> Wasn't Priscilla Presley oh, like God, wildly yes. young? God, why is everybody? They're yeah. always their cousin. Oh, so they're not good. Well, he was from the South. Oh, yes, that was like a, that was acceptable that back then. Carl Malone, also Southern, got a 13 year old pregnant. That's third. That's oh, crazy. Dear. Top the top two oh. scorer of all time in the NBA. <laughs> nobody <laughs> talks about it. Yeah, nobody weird. talks to him anymore though. Yeah, no, he's nothing. He's not. No, every around. once in a while he'll get yeah, interviewed. Yeah, definitely like, rape. It's definitely <laughs> not like you got her. It's not like knock you knocked her. It's like no, you no. He, he 13. Rape. Yeah, it's right. She was 12, and I think she had the baby at 13. Wow. Yeah, super weird. Wow. And then I think he just recently reconnected with that son. <laughs> Oh, he didn't even talk to that son. No, he he was like, "Fuck you and your stupid kid." Oh Fuck my both of you god! Kids. Can you imagine? That's how you were born. <laughs> Leaving both of you children. You silent treatment. Yeah, and I think he's like Carl Malone Jr. I have no idea what the kid's name is, but this is like for sure. <laughs> that legit. Sucks. Yeah, it does have, suck. I never knew that, and I used to yeah. love watching inside. Imagine the I'm movie. Hannibal and I take Carl Malone down. Clip. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever see who was the other football player? Because you know football because you helped yeah. me with the joke recently. How'd it go? I don't, it went really well, but then I forgot it again and I even wanted to text you. <laughs> he gave me like exact football reference for this Herbie joke. Sh- yeah. And I was on stage so happy that I got it right. Like, But you could tell that I didn't know. What was I the was joke? I was too delighted with myself. I can't remember, but you gave me a great line. <laughs> yeah. It was something <laughs> about uh, Tom Brady driving down for a winning touchdown. Something like that. And he said final drive. Like I'm trying to yeah. remember the words. It was great. It was great. You gave me The great. joke itself was great. But but anyway, so like there's there was a famous football player who's the one who threw like a lot of tantrums. He was known for having like he was a quarterback. He was known for having a really bad attitude. He threw a lot of like you know he like flipped out, got angry a lot. Anyway, then he Marina? retired young. <laughs> no, and then he <laughs> and he had a bunch of kids with a lot. Like, oh, um, 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 the Pittsburgh, Ben Roethlisberger. No, the no. old one. No, he's older. This Marty is like no, the ball guy who won four Super Bowls, and then is Harvey Keitel. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. What's his name? He won four Super Bowls for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know, and I'm really just showing my ass that I don't know who that is. He went on this show called Ianla, and it was like where he was supposed to confront the demons from his father. It's fascinating to watch. And then he had to like confront his Yasha. father, and he like wept. Oh, you know. Man. But why again, it why was would like you a, put that on TV? Uh, why, do you, I know. Nick, you got it? Terry Who went Bradshaw? with football player Who? Ianla? We Terry can find Bradshaw? it out. Terry Bradshaw. That's no, no, it's right. not Terry Bradshaw. Fuck. We can look up Ianla football player and like how many quarterbacks have been on that show. Somebody <laughs> yeah. can find that. Just tell Nikki she'll find it. I can't it. read. Are you sure he was a quarterback? 
Maybe not. But he was Sounds like, like a, maybe he was like a wide receiver. I've no yeah. idea. Chad yeah, wide receivers. How many football players? I mean, because it has to be quarterback. Crum Rarty. Didn't he have like 17 kids while he was on the Jets? And he like forgot half their names while he was trying to <laughs> list them on hard night. I like I when they name people the same name. Because they have... I mean, Terrell, yeah, Terrell, yeah. Owens. I, uh, Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens. He's still, T-O? He's still playing T-O. right now. He's playing in a fan control no pro way. league with Johnny Manziel where the fans can actually have input on what play they run. And he is like 40 something years old, 700 pounds. Didn't he just get into a abs. Didn't he get into a fight? He just recently got into some oh, fight or something like that in the locker room. Maybe I'm wrong. Locker room? I don't know. But Johnny Manziel plays in that league too. What, wait a minute. There's a fan. The yeah. fans pick it. People are, I mean, people like are doing XFL pretty cool shit because they're realizing that you don't necessarily need TV. So I think that runs on like Twitch exclusively. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So it's like football game. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty okay. cool. The whole thing. I, I don't know if it's on Twitch he, but, exclusively, yeah, but, but I do know that it exists. Huh? He's old. Have you seen his body, dude? He ran like a he's four. Ripped. No, he's he ran like, like a four five forty. A month ago, to and watch this. Oh my god, Lush. you guys watch the Elon four three is like top, top can, level. He unreal. confronted his father. The father lived next door to him and then didn't address him his whole life. I was weeping like I was. He. What is this show? This Terrell Owens Yonla? goes on some sort of show like Eon Levant said, like you're supposed to like confront all your demons. And the dad, he grew up to because he just makes you be like, oh, this fucking. Well, guy. and he's an emotional guy. Yeah, and then yeah. you're like, so he's like, I was trying to be seen when I was like, I was, you know, losing it because he literally next lives next door to his actual biological father, who Sagittary raped his mother, and the guy just ignores him every day. But he knows, and everybody knows in town that that's his dad. Yeah. So he has to walk by his lawn every day, and you know, he just wants him to look at him Yikes. and admit that he's his dad. And he won't, but everybody knows because it's like a rumor that everybody knows about. And he knows too. And so he finally, Ian Love walks him up to this guy's house and just makes him confront the dad. And then he brings him on some wow. sort of like. What does the dad say? The dad's just like, you know, he's like old and frail, like most people. Like, like at that point, it's like. So like, what do you want me to do? It's the South. He's just kind of like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You know, but it's, it's very anticlimactic. Did he, did he say sorry? He said he was sorry, but it was not very satisfying. Like I was like, mm, "There's room for you to say a little more it here, buddy." Like, never you, is. It's it never, never is, satisfying. of course. Yeah, like, yeah. but it was like something that he got to say it. But he was crying, oh and my you're just God. like, you want this guy to just be like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so proud T.O. of was you." Crying? I feel- yes, Tio was weeping, hysterically crying, oh. and you just want this guy to be like, "I see you. I'm proud of you. I yeah. get it. I'm sorry." He like said like maybe one, but it was all prompted by the therapist. Brought you know, he was just kind of like. Yeah. Oh my God! Have you ever seen that. that DMX and his son with the therapist? Oh God! It's one of the funniest fucking clips of all time. His son. Is it funny or sad? It's both, but it's really funny. Also, also, I totally forgot that I filmed basically this exact same thing with my dad. Really? <laughs> you did this? Yeah, not for no this way. show, but uh, Nicole is is working on it with me. It's going to be a documentary, but I don't. My dad and I have had a long standing feud. Where is uh, your dad? He's in. Uh, he's in Rockland, actually. Near you? Near me? Yeah, and I've. I've we've How- since like. Not necessarily patch things up, but I've taken actually hardcore advice from you indirectly, where something that you said has affected me very deeply, where it's like you're the- comedy? No, well, no. Unfortunately, (laughs) I'm sticking this one out. But it was the you're the dad now. I've said that on the show before. And for some reason, it became a part of me where I no longer am concerned with the past, and I'm not the little boy, and I'm not like hurt by that mm-hmm. shit anymore because I feel authoritative and and comfortable in my new position and very like proud and happy about it. Yeah. So I invited my dad to film this thing where I went to his hometown of Levittown, Long Island, and I asked him to take me by the mall. By the mall, yeah, by the flea market. Right. Okay. If that's the mall. But uh, and I asked him to take me to places that because I don't know much about his childhood. We're an Irish Catholic family. We not talk about shit exactly at all. So mm. I asked him to take me to places that meant something to him. Oh my god! And he did, and he taught me. It told me all about it, and we filmed it, and uh, we had a one pretty intense conversation in my car in his now defunct high school as it was raining on the fucking it's powerful on, on the windshield. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty intense. Was did you he cry? able to say anything satisfying? I I, I yeah. Yes, actually, it was mo- it was more satisfying from the point where it, that's kind of when I came to terms with I'm not like I'm not fucked up about this anymore in the sense that I don't feel broken. I'm just like you kind of mourn who they weren't or whatever. It, I, I'm so. now I'm not even like mourning that. Like I, this is the first the first death that I've kind of not even death, but it's the death of what I 
was holding on to to a long time. Because I know people that have listened to me on podcasts for years are like, can't believe what I'm saying because I've said awful, vitriolic, angry shit about my dad over the Mm -hmm. years. And a lot of it was really justified from his treatment. But I'm now at a point in my life where I'm trying my best to completely rid myself of that weight and that negativity so it doesn't poison my son. But is he in your son's life? Yeah, yeah. He is. He is now in the sense that I said, and he wasn't, he showed up to my first special, actually. We hadn't talked in months because we had, like, this crazy drag-out fight about, you know, whatever. It's not even important. Right. And then he surprised me at my special, of course, like, before I walked on stage, was like, hey, and I'm like, God damn it. Oh, that's and I almost tricky. I almost killed out of spite. Like I was yeah. so livid that I it actually like calcified my focus. So and I was like, let's go. So he's in your son's life now as a grandfather. Mm-hmm. No shit. Yeah. In the sense that and you know, not in like he's not over every day, but we have no, periodic a, meetings where, where where we do stuff. And I yeah. I thought like it, it it made me really sad because my son or it didn't make me sad, but it made me empathize with my dad because my son has my dad's face sometimes, right. especially when he's crying. So, like, to watch my dad as a baby cry as my son is a little bit psychedelic and weird and has forced me into empathetic places that I didn't think were possible or that I could access. And so it's given me a lot of understanding and thought about what he has gone through in his life because he's a child of abuse. He passed that on. You forget that. I forgave yeah. my yeah, mom me too, yeah. for a bunch of shit because... I one day I realized that my mom was 15 when she had my sister, <laughs> and and if, when you were 15, when you had uh, a kid, okay. as a Catholic girl, you didn't come home. You went yeah. away to this place yeah. with nuns, and then when she was 18, she had me, and she had to go away too. You don't just go back to the house right. with an Irish Catholic family with eight kids, and my her husband or whatever. My dad was in Vietnam. And I just read an article of his first night in Vietnam. It's on the web. My father actually wrote something for the, his local newspaper. No shit. About his first night in Vietnam where they, he was so scared and they put him on the, the front line, the perimeter. And he was, they were like, oh, they're coming. The Viet Cong's coming tonight. They're, gonna, they're on their way, so be careful. And then it started raining out. And he couldn't see, couldn't hear. He was just in a foxhole waiting to die for a night. That sure, was his first night sure. in Nam. And it's like, my dad was a drug addict. Mm. My mom was fucking 18. I couldn't imagine yeah. being 18 and having two kids and your husband is in another fucking country fighting a weird war. Can't imagine any of it. And then, and then I expected my mom to be a good mom. And then she married a fucking abusive guy. Yeah. who didn't want me and my sister, just wanted my mom, had money, and she saw her way out, and she took it. She saw her way out of my grandmother's house. Thirteen of us lived in a three-bedroom house in Medford. It was, my uncle lived on a sun porch in the winter. Yeah. My other uncle lived in a closet, a bed in a closet, and we slept on the floor in my uncle's room next to a weight bench. And there was two people in that room. It was crazy. And then she found this guy, and, and we got a house, and we got all this shit, and... I remember walking into my room and there was a toy box full of toys and there was a desk and I remember seeing a lamp and I was like, is that my lamp? She was like, yeah, that's yours. I was like, I have a lamp? No. Like I I was like, oh my God. And I kept flicking the light on and off. Like, this is mine. (laughs) You're like Tom Hanks at the end of Castaway. (laughs) It was crazy. Yeah. (laughs) Big crab legs. And then I think it was three months later, I woke up to my mom being beaten and my sister being beaten in the kitchen. And then he fucking went after me, all three oh of us. Oh, my God. And that was from that day on until five years later when she left, we went through this shit with this yeah. guy. You know, my mom, so, you know, I had to forgive my mom because yeah. my mom was a kid and she was, you know, That's a lot of abused. Trauma. That's a yeah. lot of trauma. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Because I always wanted my mom to change. I always wanted my mom to fucking, I went to AA, I went to meet, I went to therapy. Yeah, I don't take any fucking drugs. I don't do any, you know, therapeutic drugs, you know, to, to kind of level me out, you know. Um, I know. I know some people do. I don't. Yeah. Um, and I always wanted to change. And that's when she, I remember we were in a fight. I think it was like eight years ago, screaming at each other. And, and she she just I remember she whispered into the phone. She goes, Bobby, when are you going to realize? 
realize I'm never going to change. And I was wow. like, I'm out. I'm done. We haven't fought since. Yeah. We haven't had a fight since then. I'm just like, it's okay. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. You got fucking twisted. Your generation, there's no way out. Yeah. Yeah. Just no way out. I had to, I went to fucking rehab. I went to AA meetings. The ship sails sometimes. It's over. It's and I gone. feel bad. Yeah. She smokes weed now. No. She fi- uh, She started smoking weed. I mean, she just lost her husband again two years ago. Yeah. The love it of her life. Like somebody said to me once, because I was like some guy that went through something like that, like a lot of pain, a lot of abuse. And, mm. you know, he was really terrible to me. And I tried to help and get him therapy and do everything because I always do this with people. Yeah. And like just so that he would be n- kind yeah. and not abusive. And then. I was just like, but I did this, and then this happened, and I tried to say that, and my friend was just like, he can't. He can't. He can't. He, can't. Nope. he never can. He never will. He can't. It's not there. He doesn't have it in, in there anywhere. And sometimes you just have to like That's, realize that, but there's an acceptance that comes over. It sucks. You know? like, I, I, I'm, so, I'm glad your dad and you fixed something, mm. because to have a grandfather, like Max has uh, uncles and aunts and shit, and he had a grandfather in my step, my second stepfather, who was amazing, but he died. Mm-hmm. I'm so sad about that. Yeah, because I, you know, having a grandparent to me, my grandmother and grandfather were my father and mother. Mm-hmm. I called my grandmother mom because my mom was a kid. Yeah, she didn't know what the fuck she was doing. Sometimes she did the best she could. Right. She really did. She worked seven days a week. She did, you know, she had to make money. It was a fucking weird, you don't go on food stamps. You're Irish Catholic, you, you fucking work. My grandmother paid him back. Yeah. Because she went on welfare and then paid it back. You just didn't do it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like yeah, if it makes you see so much in every family, I feel like it's always addiction and alcoholism. Yeah. It's just every single family. Like, my mom's mother died in front of her when she was 17. It's like, you know what? She died. She was an alcoholic my mom's whole life. Cried herself to sleep every night. My mom took care of her. You know, it's just like, and then that was it. She watched her die. Nobody talked about it. They just sent her to college. That was it. She <laughs> went to weird. a funeral the oh next God. day. Nobody talked about it at the funeral. <laughs> she said she still remembers. Like, she took me to the house where her mom <laughs> lived. And, and she said, when she, where she grew up. And she's like, I still remember, like, waking up at the funeral thinking, like, it must have been a dream. Nobody said anything to me. It was just, you put on this dress, and now you're going to school. You know? And she's yeah. just like, but she did. You know? It's weird in those moments, it's, too. My, <laughs> I, my best friend's brother, who... By pro- proximity, was one of my good friends. Yeah, we were close in age. He died when I was in college, and I was fly. I flew home immediately. Flew home immediately to be mm-hmm. with my friends, all of my friends, to get together because it was a fucking huge loss yeah. for all of us. And my parents were blown away. They were like, "You're coming. Like you can't come home." Like they were basically saying, "I shouldn't." Confused. And we're empathizing. Yeah, yeah go to the funeral. Like, what do you? I don't even understand. Like, I was asking basically for like a hundred dollars for the flight from Rochester to New York. <laughs> it was so fucking. And they were like, "Yeah, like, I no, guess you disassociate when you go to a meadow in your head where it's safe when something like this happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have yeah. a whiskey and you like, yeah, you don't go anywhere near the event. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's f- fucking weird how they didn't the dealing with it." Was not dealing with it. Mm-hmm. I never saw my grandmother and grandfather have a conversation, like communicate, like me and Don, like talk about shit. Yeah, like have fucking crazy conver- and go through something. I never my grandma my grandfather would just go ugh, and go in the other room and sit in a chair, and she would come in and be like Joe, Joe, oh forget it. And she'd go in the kitchen. <laughs> he was in the living room. She was in the kitchen. Yeah, and then she go Joe, dinner's ready. He would come in and eat. You know, it was fucking weird. Yeah, those couples may have 40 years of war on their face. That's (laughs) how my parents were, even though they were like very much there for me and not Mm -hmm. abusive and kind parents. But they didn't. My dad like never discussed him. Like he never said, I love you. I was like, maybe on my wedding day. He was rushing down the aisle like he was in a rush on my wedding. That was his way. He's like, all right, we got to go. I'm like, wouldn't this be the moment where my dad would put like a hand on my back? He's like, all right, so let's not be late now. (laughs) You just treat it like we were on a baseball game. We weren't going to get our tickets or so get seated in time. I'm like, no, Dad, this might be the moment where you were able to say it. But nope, couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. My mom said he's cried twice in his life. Once when he dropped my brother off at Ithaca. Once at the... <laughs> once at the Cooperstown Hall of Fame. I'm sorry, three times. And once during the movie Deer Hunter. My wedding, not a tear. But he just didn't do that. Like, But he guys yeah. treated women. My grandfather, it, you didn't... Connect with girls. You know what I mean? Like, if I had a girl right now, I would fucking be in love with her. Mm. I mean, I kiss my son. 
Yeah. I mean, 900 times a day. I love yeah. my kid. And he cannot. We had a fight last week and he was leaving the school. I go, get, well, I go, get back here. I go, you don't leave this house without giving your dad a kiss and a hug. I know you're mad, but I love you no matter what. And he came back and it hugged me. And you felt his, like, you felt that hug. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was yeah. like, all right, you can go now. But my, I mean, Jesus Christ, I didn't get a hug until I was, I think I was Never. in fucking rehab. Yeah, I don't remember a hug. Do you remember hugs? No. I mean, my mom, I, I will give her credit. She was, she was very loving, but she also was violent. My grandmother was both. Loving. My grandmother was the best. My grandmother was the fucking, she, she was the best. She was the best. I loved my grandmother so much. She would, I would, I would stay over her house. I was there all the time. She used to buy me pepperoni sticks, and I would just eat pepperoni by the stick and watch TV. And she would take me to the store, and I would get milk with her. I mean, dude, I remember even in my darkest drinking, fuck you, arrested, I will fucking, fucking hit you with something. Bob Kelly days. I was walking out with a six pack of Heinekens from the house that I hid in the bushes. And I, Robert Patrick Kelly, come here. I walked back and she goes, put those down. Be back at 11. And I gave them to her. Like I did not disrespect my grandmother. Mm. The best. Yeah. The fucking best. I loved her so much. I feel about my grandma too. Yeah, I miss yeah. her still to this day. It's like so. She was so funny too. She was fucking hilarious and sarcastic. But she would sing songs and she was delightful. She would let me have food at all kinds of hours. Like I would have sweets in the morning. Mm. Those things mean a lot because we had like low grade depression snacks, like just Melba toast. That was just <laughs> sadness to our snacks. Just really make you want to shoot yourself in the uh, face. And off brand Oreos. At yes. The, like oh. fucking. Packing uh, my, my, she used to get Ugh. cheese nips instead of zit. Oh, my mom nips. was always trying to take some Ugh. gross shortcut, some yeah. slovenly shortcut. Cheese, yeah. cheese nips sucked. Yeah, those do suck. Oh, uh, hey, she I got quick those. instead of the syrup, Ooh. the powder. You had to uh, make that's it. Not that. Well, Ovaltine was better than quick. Uh, quick powder sucked. I like the squirt. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I was so jealous. I used to be so jealous of like that. My, my grandma used to say it's the it's the Catholics that have those sorts of things, but Jews don't eat white bread and that kind of thing, mayonnaise. Because <laughs> you're a Jew, that's why you don't have those things in your house. They're ignorant snacks. <laughs> she used to always say that. Of course, you don't have helmets. <laughs> ignorant <laughs> snacks. That's yes. great. That's why your father's a civil rights attorney. You know, <laughs> Hellman's mayonnaise. But she was funny as shit. She was sarcastic and hilarious. But then she'd be like, when you come here, I'll give you all sorts of delightful things. And then when she was dying, my my aunt, her daughter. Your characters used to bug me so much. And now I fucking just want you to do They're all unreal. the They're unreal. She was funny. She was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking ignorant snack. <laughs> They're very ignorant snack. Well, your last name is Feinstein. That's why you don't have Swedish fish in your house. Be thankful. <laughs> But when she was dying, my aunt <laughs> interviewed her. And she was so funny. She interviewed her about her whole life. And of course, just like all this shit you were saying, like her husband went to war. It just fucking nonstop, just devastation, right? Mm -hmm. And she's yeah. so funny and delightful and got a song for everything. Just husband, this one died in the war. Half the brothers died in the war. And her, her daughter's interviewing her. And she's trying to get her to come to this place of emotion about it. And she's like, now when your brother came back from the war, he was... He was different, would you say? And she's like, well, he was, he was crazy. He was, he was shithouse nuts. <laughs> she was so funny. She's like, I don't even want to say here. Yeah, he was, yeah, was crazier than a shithouse rat. They all were. He came back, they were wrong. But she was so fucking funny, you know? And my, I came, my mother's side of the family, you know, they were like the Protestants that didn't make jokes like that. She was hilarious. She would just say like irreverent shit. And I was like, oh, I want to do that, you know? Uh. But she would also kiss and give hugs. And in my family, they, yeah, there was very little of that. You know? Yeah, I didn't get a lot of that. My grandfather, no, my grandfather was the shit, though. He was like World War II vet. Yeah. Just man. Did he smoke a pipe? He smoked a pipe, a yeah. cigar in Grandpa the living room. Pipes, I was yeah. a captain in the Merchant Marines. Uh, <laughs> took un unarmed boats to deliver supplies, like both in Oof. Germany and then fucking Africa as well. He was. He was Mine wild. was in the Navy and his ship was torpedoed, but my aunt says that she's like, he was a chef. <laughs> 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 All right, listen, we got to wrap this the fuck up. Um, this is a very emotional podcast. Yeah, sorry. I liked it. I like it. What a good one. What a it was fucking really tenderoni this one became. Right after Ray yelled at me. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm just going to say yes and I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to change my personality. Listen, here's the thing. We got a couple uh questions. We got a, uh, we're going to go into Patreon thing for like 10 minutes. Yeah. We got questions for you from the fans, Great. For both of you. All right. If you don't mind answering them. Love to. 
And uh, you guys got a bunch of questions. I actually got, uh, I don't know, I mean, this is pretty, I got a couple of mean things said about me and my producer, who's your producer, who favors you for some Whose reason. birthday it is today. Is it? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Joe you, Nicole. Oh, uh, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Stand you. Stand up. She is. Happy <laughs> birthday, <laughs> dear you. Nicole. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Oh. What'd you get her? Um, it's coming tomorrow during our recording. Oh, our podcast. My thing's coming tomorrow, too. <laughs> I had to pee really bad. Can I run and pee? Yeah, please run and pee. Um, where are you going? I don't know where the bathroom. bathroom's right there. <laughs> you got to pee in the hallway. Um, all right, so we got some questions. All right, we're going to Patreon.com. Wait, right can now. I plug my? Pu- we're going to do that right now. Okay, I'm going to do this, and then you're going to do that, and okay. she's going to do it. I was kind of stalling a little bit, but it was just give her a little time to whistle. I have a long one. Do it, so. man. We're here to promote the fuck out of you, Cannon. You're the next dude. We'll you're the next guy. Up. Uh, ugh, you threw up in your mouth? No, That's but disgusting. it was almost. All right, so check it out. Uh, thank everybody for listening. ComicRebels.com. Make sure you go there. You can get all the YKWD merch. Use code word Ladybugs. I want to thank again all the people at Coastal Creative. I want to thank uh, all the people at Side Splitters and Tampa and Mike Calta and, of course, Louie, Leah. You guys are the best. I sh- the special was awesome. Had a great time. Thanks for showing up and, and packing the place out. I'm so uh, excited to see it. Yeah, I am too, man. I hope it comes out well. And it's good that you guys go through. It's good to hear comics going through the same shit. Because I think when you think you're the shit, mm-hmm. when you think, oh, everything's... Per- that worries me. Yeah. That fucking scares me. Yeah, it's also kind of the antithesis of comedy. Oh, I got to tell you what the fucking... The, I had a kid open up for me. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you what... A kid he, from the boat? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta tell you what he said. All right, good. Hilarious. We'll do that in Patreon though. Uh <laughs> make sure you go to patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. Become a member. Uh but if you're not gonna, if you're just gonna watch this for free, that's awesome. The show's always been free on Sundays, but uh, you just hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the thumbs up, do all that stuff. Just hit it. Become a member, subscriber. And uh I like your signature. Thank you very much. Go to uh robertkellylive.com. Uh, slash oh, patreon.com slash Robert Kelly live become a member it's like a cup of coffee a month and you get to watch the show live and you get to be in the chat and you get the show before anybody else plus you get this segment we're going to do right now we get to ask everybody on the show some questions if you want be part of it we're going to try a new segment tonight called you know what dude and uh, there you go Robert Kelly uh, for all my dates I got Uncle Vinny's coming up. Uh, this weekend, I'm at the Superstar Theater Resort and Casino Atlantic City Saturday night. I'm there with K.P. Burke and then Uncle Vinny's next week. And then I'm going on tour with Louie for a month. So nice. I will be away and then just for laughs and all that stuff. So uh, there you go for that. Mike, what do you got? Uh, May 18th. On my YouTube, my new special, White Privilege Homeless, is coming out. Uh, YouTube.com slash Mike Cannon Comedy. I spent a full Bobby's watch on this, baby. So please watch it, share, like, comment, suck the algorithms, asshole. Do everything you can to boost this thing into I've the- I've heard uh, how incredible it is. I'm so excited. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm very excited about it as well. And, uh, you know, yeah, May 18th, share it, please. May 18th, Wednesday night. Yeah, it premieres at 9 p.m. Where? On, on, on YouTube? On YouTube, we'll premiere at 9 p.m., and then it's up there. And that's forever. a live, right? I'll tweet it. Yeah, oh, thank you. And that's a live, right? That's a live, yeah. All right, dude, make sure everybody who's listening to this go May 18th. Watch it live. Yeah, please. Just watch it live. I'll be in the chat. You'll be in the chat. I'll send you, you a talk dude. To him. Uh, honestly, God, one of my favorite young comics coming up. He's amazing. He is one of the funniest guys out there, and I'm not just saying that. And a good guy and a good father. <laughs> He is. Thank oh my you. God, I'm in trouble again. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to go home and second guess my. Listen, don't. Now. I love Rachel. Rachel, look at me. I love you. You're one of my favorite people in the business, and you're part of my comedy family. You can never, ever be on my bad side. Ever. No. I love you. Thank I really you do. Happy. I love you and I your love husband. I love you too. Yeah, I really do. So you, I would never be mad at you. Okay. Ever. You if were, you ever uh, talk over me again. <laughs> um, you, were, that you, you, you were complimenting me. I was, but she stepped on it. So we're going to move on. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I have to pee anyway. That was a oh, Rachel, what do you got? May 18th? Uh, just go to my website, rachel feinsteincom My Netflix is a joke special will be coming out soon. I think it's in 
in the beginning of June. Did you shoot a special this week? Yes, it was Amy Schumer and Friends, so I did Seven Minutes. Chris D was on it. It was a bunch of us on, and it's a part of, it's a Netflix special called Amy Schumer and Friends. That's great. Yeah, so it's Chris D, Christina Pazitsky, Jay McBride, Ron Funches. Love Jay McBride. Um, a lot of uh, great comics, and, uh, and Amy hosted it. So, That's great. I love Jay really McBride. Fun. She's so funny. She's hilarious and a lo- really cool ass person too. She's the best. I, lo- I met her. I met her in Ro- uh, Albany. Mm. Showed up in Albany one night. She was doing radio with the, like a local guy on some. It was at a Christian Christian college or something like that. You knew she was an ultra boy. I think something yeah. crazy. Her, her story yeah. is amazing. Her story's great. But then she went on stage. I so come down and do and a she spot. She ripped it. She rips. Yeah, she's, she's fucking hilarious. Hilarious. Sweet person, too. Really nice person. Really, really good person. And she's fucking um, destroyed the special. Did she do? Oh, good. Good. I'm so happy. I love when people I like get shit, um, even though they fucking twisted me out of that thing. Christina and, P was hilarious, too. She's who's Christina P? Christina Pazitsky. I don't know that person. Christina Pazitsky. She's, she's, uh, she has like your mom's house podcast. She's married to Tom Segura. Oh, all right. Tom Segura's. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Uh- Stick around. It's not over yet. This episode of YKWD is continuing now exclusively on patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. See you there. Pretty penny. All right. I got to go. Uh, Michael, I love you. I love you. I can't wait to see a special Joe. We got Act Jokes Russell. Please check out his cheese show on YouTube. Him and his lovely wife, uh, and of course, new Nikki, the producer of the show. Happy uh, birthday! Happy birthday, Nikki! Happy happy birthday! And uh, Mike, wherever you are, Mush. And I want to thank you, fans. You're Mike, the best fan. Wherever you are, <laughs> he's in San Antonio. <laughs> he's watching with a knife. Um, he's gonna kill me someday. I hope Nikki will probably get that on video and you'll play it in the scenario. <laughs> Subtitle. How mad did Voss get when you said you were bigger than him? It was awesome. Wow. Yeah, that was real fun. I mean, the truth hurts. You know what? The... We'll see you next week. <laughs> You've been listening to the YKWD podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.